Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Toshley, and today we're going to be looking back at Torchlight. With Torchlight 2 just around the corner, it seems only fitting to take a gander back at this fantastic hack and slash RPG. Developed by Runic Games, a company consisting primarily of explicit employees, it's only natural that their first child of a game would be a fantastic Diablo-style action RPG that it is. The game has a fantastic art style and an absolutely immaculate soundtrack, as you can tell. The composer of said soundtrack is actually one of the ones that worked on the original Diablo, Diablo 2, the expansion, so anyone that's played that game will feel right at home listening to this track. The game was well received by critics and fans alike. The only real criticism that it received was a lack of co-op, which is being sold with the release of Torchlight 2. The game has three classes with a variety of different roles that they can play. First up, we have the Destroyer. He's your typical warrior. He'll hack, he'll slash, he'll crash, and he'll bash his way through enemies with ease and no resistance at all. Our second class is the Vanquisher. She's your typical rogue. Typical rogue or ranger, really. She'll shoot, she'll cut, she'll slice, she'll smash, she won't smash. But she'll slice her way through enemies, tear them to ribbons with skill and expertise. The third, final, and my personal favourite class, the Alchemist. He's your typical wizard, Harry. He'll conjure up spells to destroy his adversaries, he'll imbue his weapons with magic to destroy his foes, and he'll summon creatures from the deep to do his very bidding. Ladies and gentlemen, Torchlight. Oh, there's also a pet, which has a variety of neat features aside from just attacking shit. We'll have a look at that a bit later in the video. I'll be playing through this game as an alchemist, showing off some of the amazing, neat, and fantastic features that made, make this game worthy of all the critical acclaim that it has achieved. The game has four difficulty modes. Easy, normal, hard, and of course, very hard. And in classic Diablo style, we have hardcore mode where death is permanent. Not going to be playing on that today. We're just going to stick with hard. And here is our main hub, the town of Torchlight. It's a place where you buy, you sell, you pick up and hand in quests. You can do everything here. You can forge, you can create, you can destroy, you can build, you can do whatever the hell you want from storing to leveling to progressing the main quest to fishing or just do a few side quests to get a few levels and a few stat boosts. And here we have our first little encounter in the, the town of Torchlight. I'm not really going to be paying all that much attention to the story or the text or the dialogue or anything along those lines because you don't really play a game like this for the story, you play it purely for the gameplay and that's what we're going to be focusing on in this little playthrough. And here we're entering our first little dungeon. The amount of levels that this thing has is almost countless, I'd say. It's absolutely ridiculous how far down it goes. And one thing I want to say about the dungeons here is it is partially randomly generated. It's not truly random. All the set pieces here are handmade by map developers, however. They're all done in a bunch of different chunks, which are put together in a rather cohesive manner, which make it look natural. But every single time you re-enter this dungeon, it's going to look slightly different, which is really refreshing when you inevitably decide to play a different class. The gameplay, as you can clearly see, is your standard Diablo fare. Hack and slash and pick up loots and all that goodness. It's exactly what you want from a Diablo style game, which is why it's so well received, because hey, we haven't had a Diablo game in quite a while, nor any really good Diablo style games. The last one I can think of was Titan Quest, and if I recall correctly, that game was very, very buggy and unpleasant. I want to point on the art style. A lot of people will absolutely love the grimdark art style of Diablo 1 and 2. This one's a bit different, it's a lot brighter, it's a lot cartoony, and as you can quite clearly see, it's very WoW inspired, maybe even with a touch of the Incredibles put in here. Nonetheless, the game looks great, and the soundtrack's definitely gorgeous as well. As I mentioned before, composed by one of the ones that worked on the original Diablo and Diablo 2, and I believe the expansion, so anyone that's playing this game will feel really familiar with this soundtrack. The composer deliberately used similar instruments and a similar time to really capture the same feel with anyone that was deep into the Diablo series and that enjoyed the soundtrack, which is pretty much everyone because that game had a pretty good soundtrack. Now what we're going to be doing here is simply just 
playing through the first couple of levels, probably about 10 minutes or so of gameplay, just to show off why this game is so great. As I mentioned before, we're playing the Alchemist, we're going to be primarily shooting people with spells. In the next few levels, we'll get some more exciting spells, which would spice up the gameplay a little bit more. One thing we should be able to see soon is uh, various interactive features such as doors you can open, levers you can pull to smash open new pathways and reveal enemies, loots, hidden treasures, all that good stuff. The main st spell I'm using here right now is, I actually can't remember, I think it's called Ember Strike, it's pretty much the, the first default spell that you get when you pick the wizard Harry. Yeah, as expected, as you can quite clearly see, there's no reason to tell you guys this. We're simply carving our way through monitors. Monitors? What? No, we're carving our way through monsters in standard Diablo Fair. We're picking up loot, we're gaining XP, we're progressing our way through, I guess. And here we have our first quest item, the Gleaming Ember, which if you paid attention, you probably didn't because I just zoomed right past and was talking over it. This is our very, very first sort of a side quest. And here we're going to pick the ember up. We're probably going to use a town portal to return back to the base, hand in the quest, pick up the next one, and be on our way. Something I want to touch on is the identification feature, which, once we start doing it, I'll start explaining it. Yep, as expected, we're going to open a portal to the town, which brings us straight into the heart of Torchlight. We'll come out. We'll sell a few items, we might buy some health or mana potions, but most, most importantly, we'll hand in the quest and pick up a few others along the way. Here we have Vazman, our quest giver. We should level up. It's glorious. We'll be able to put some, get some new spells and get some, put some of the stats in our stat stuff. Wow. Here I am looking for a fishing hole, which is probably the least exciting aspect of this game. Go around fishing, it has some neat uses, but the actual act of fishing is just awful. It's rather dull and it's something that I never really did all that much. Oh no, it's over there. Yeah, there we have it. There's a fishing hole. Now let's take a look at fishing. What's the point of fishing? You can get some neat items from it. There's one that's an ember fish eye, I think it's called, which gives you a bonus 20% experience for about 20 seconds, which is amazingly helpful to get a nice sharp boost of XP when you're about to fight on a, a massive horde of monsters. And you see, this is why this game is awful. Look at how long we're going to have to wait to get one goddamn fish. Keep waiting, keep waiting. And the game tries to trick you a lot, so you'll bring it so close to that edge, but it won't actually do it. There we go, our first fish after, what, 15 seconds? Ridiculous. And it was just a tunnel shark, which, which a it's actually alright. We'll tell you what the fish do later. There's actual fish you can catch, which are very handy for the, the pet we have over there. It goes by the name of Spot. Nice little wolf. Now, that was a quick catch, and what do we pick up? A gooper jelly. We'll probably do this a few more times, it's going to be very, very entertaining, and there's not going to be all that much to talk about while the action is happening, which is unfortunate, because this is just so bad. Oh, God. You know, I was actually hoping to have the video around 10 minutes long, and we're currently at almost 9 minutes, and we're fishing. Not showing off the amazing features, but fishing, which is pretty much the dullest activity in this game. It's rather unfortunate, maybe I'll load a part 2 which actually has more gameplay in it. And finally we're setting off, we're going to return to the portal, return to the very spot that we opened it, and start progressing our way through the dungeon again. We'll also get a new spell, we'll get to put some stats in, it'll be good. It shall be good. Now I probably should have done some more editing to cut out these boring bits, but after bringing that intro forth, it actually took a lot out of me, and I just wanted to commentate over the gameplay, unfortunately. I didn't consider that there would be that much boring crap in there. Anyway, we're having a look at the new spells. Here's Eye Shock, which is a nice AoE range spell. Unfortunately, we can't pick it up to level 5, but an AoE spell is absolutely necessary. It's so handy, so we're going to pick up one rank of Ember Shot, which is... It's a bit of a double-edged sword. It's a nice, powerful AoE, but it's very directed. In order to actually initiate it, you have to hit the target and actually hit it physically with your fist. And as a caster, getting all up in their face 
is typically not a good idea because it results in you dying horribly. Nevertheless, we shall deal with it. And there you have it, that's our first Ember Shock. It will stun and it will just completely obliterate the person it hits. Now hopefully very soon I'll show off what exactly the fish do, which is very neat and hopefully a little bit after that I'll also show off what the pet does exactly, aside from just attack things. It's got a very handy feature which I absolutely would have loved in pretty much any Diablo style hack and slash like this. It just reduces time. Some people might say it it sort of ruins it, but it really doesn't. It doesn't at all. It just reduces the grind and there's absolutely nothing bad about that. Alright, now let's take a gander at the identification system. As you'd expect, items that you pick up are cloaked. You can't actually see what they are. You have to use an identification scroll or a spell which you can pick up or purchase for absorbent amounts of money in order to see what the item is. It's not really a bother. You'll find loads of these scrolls. You'll find way more than you can actually use, and if somehow you've managed to run out of scrolls, you can simply go back to town and pick it up. We're going to have a first NPC, which I'm not actually sure why he's here from a gameplay perspective, because he doesn't really do anything, aside from talk a little bit. Like, oh, well, oh, you're in the mine here. Oh, tunnels are rich with... Oh. Really don't know why he's in there. There's not much point. Nevertheless, we're going to continue bashing our way forth through the enemies, and looks like we're going to identify a couple more items. Let's see what this helmet has. Not bad, but actually not that useful at all. But let's check the staff out. What have we got? Slightly better than what we've got, so we'll, we're going to go with that. Equip it. Yes, yes, yes. Better staff. Won't really do all that much. Oh, and just like Diablo, got a gem system, a socketing system. And hopefully very soon my inventory will start filling up and we'll take a look at what exactly the pet does, and it's probably one of my favorite features, one of my most favorite features in Torchlight is exactly what the pet does, but it seems we're going to continue onwards because I thought, hey, I should only show off the pet business after I've got a full inventory or emphasize how useful it is, and then I decided not to edit the gameplay, which was quite evidently a bad idea, but nevertheless, we're going to deal with it continue soldiering on. I'll probably upload a part two of this for anyone that actually wants to see the gameplay. I'm not sure why it's not particularly amazing. And here we are going to move on to level two. So level one took quite a bit of time. What was that? Seven minutes or so? Quite a while to get through the first level. Here we are on the second level. And there are countless levels. There are so many. It's ridiculous. Onto the second level, and what are we going to have down here? More monsters to kill, yes. More monsters, more loot. Are we finally going to use a pet? I don't think so. Nope. Nope. We have a look at the gem socketing system. Nope, we're going to... Ah, we're going to show off the fish. So if you feed one of the fish that you fish up for your dog... I mean, what? One of the fish that you fish up from a fishing hole, what will happen? You feed it to him, and he transforms into... Well, whatever the description says, it typically lasts for around 120 seconds, however, if you keep at it and get lucky, you'll pick up a giant version of that fish, which will transform him permanently. And as you can quite clearly see, he is wrecking them, absolutely tearing his way through the enemies, and hey, level 3, pick up another rank of some spells, and put a couple of points in defense so we can use that helmet, yes. And what should we level up? You know, I probably should have picked up a rank in the summons just to show them off, considering this is meant to be a highlight to show everyone just a good taste of everything that is Torchlight. However, I guess I'm not that smart. And ever since my screensaver decided to pop up and ruin the recording for the second time, I noticed we're closing in on 15 minutes, which is the target length for the video. I think I'll upload a part two to this for anyone that's actually interested in continuing the watching of this pretty bad, pretty bad gameplay combined with some rather lackluster commentary. Nevertheless, I think we'll cut it here. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you guys next time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching episode one of Looking Back at Torchlight. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button, and if you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. It's what it's there for. And if you want to go that extra mile to help me out, leave a comment. Tell me what you did wrong, Tell me what I did right. It could really help improve the quality of these videos. Thank you very much, folks. I'll see you guys next time.